Hey, and welcome back to Learn to Code for Kids and Complete Beginners. And I'm your host, the Coder Noob. In this session, we're going to talk about variables. So, you can see on my screen right now, I have, if you've been following the previous videos, then you'll be all caught up and you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. So, if any of this is new to you, definitely check out the first videos first so uh, in my scene I simply have a camera and I have a demo script attached to it again you should know how to do that at this point and here's my demo script and if I just double click it it's just a standard script with nothing in it the uh, void update method and the void update uh, void start are just the two uh, default methods that comes when you uh, create the script. As you can see, I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. I'm going to clean up the script a little bit and then we'll get started. So, this is all I have right now. So, right now, if I run the game, once it updates, compile, run the game, game is running, the play button turns blue. Here's my log, and there is a nothing on my log. Cool. Let's just bring the log down here. So nothing is happening. Let's talk about variables. Variables is, think of it as a way for you to tell the computer, for you to translate between your language, English, or whatever you speak, into a computer language where the computer can understand what you're talking about. You can also think of it as a little storage bag where you can put certain types of data and you give that little storage bag a name like Bob and Bob has some data in it and every time you tell the computer Bob the computer uh, the computer would reference that data would you know bring you back that data another way is is um, like I was saying before is a way to talk to the computer so the computer can understand for example the computer knows that the plus symbol or operator right here can add two numbers together like two plus two the computer knows that that's four you know that that's four, but the computer cannot tell you that this is four because the computer is simply calculating the values. It knows that two plus two, and that's it. Now, if you want it to tell you the answer, if the computer needed to give you the answer, it needs to give you that data, and that data needs to have a name. So, it's like, computer, what's two plus two? It's technically, well, it's technically four, but how's the computer going to tell us that? So if we wrote something like in our, um, I know we have a start function, right? Now if we wrote print, and then we say answer, print me the answer. And the computer's completely confused. First of all, it doesn't know what answer is. But you wanted to print us this. So it does not know how to give us that total. And that's where a variable would come in. For example, we can tell the computer that the data type int, and we're going to tell it, let's give that data type a name, answer. So now the computer knows what answer is. But yet answer is still blank answer is still zero at this point so we can take answer at this point and tell it okay well answer is or is the sum of two plus two so with that saved I've now stored what I need which is the answer into answer so answer equals two plus two which should be four and now I'm telling the computer to print me answer 
So you see how I've stored that data in, and now when I run the game, I get the log and the number 4. Now there's many other types of data in uh, working with uh, variables. In this case, we explored int. There's also strings and, well, tons of types of data that we're probably going to get into at some point. Um, let's just look more into exactly what what's the real purpose of having variables and how useful they can be. So let's look at why this can be very helpful. Let's make some more integers. Int num1 and int num2. So I'll take the answer and I'm going to put it down here. So I'm going to create it, give it the value, and then print it. Instead of these like fixed numbers where you know you can't change these unless you're in the code, I'm going to tell it num1 plus num2. So the answer is whatever these are. So let's set them. Let's make this 5 and we can make this 6. Okay, so we save this. Unity will compile. Press play. Now we get 11. Because 5 and 6 is 11. Here's a cool thing though. If we click on the camera that has the demo script, you see there's nothing here. But if we made our integers public if we made them public so instead of having it at 5 I just leave it blank at 6 I'll leave it blank but we made them public so that means we can go back to Unity, and if I click on the camera, you see that they show up here as public variables. Now earlier I did set them as 5 and 6. Unity remembers that and kind of store them in there by default. But this means I can change this. Let's make it 50 and 3. I press play. So I've changed my view around a little bit just to make it better for you to see. Again, if I run the game, as soon as it starts, I get 53 right there. Let's have the computer print my name. I'm going to tell it to print name. Well, actually, name is actually a real existing variable so I should probably change that to something else like underscore name now it doesn't know what name is which is correct because I haven't created any variable called name I'm gonna create one now it's gonna be a string string means text it's gonna be a string and I'm gonna call it underscore name just like this and I'm gonna tell it noob inside quotations so it turns red and then always end with that semicolon so now noob it should print noob I'll save it back to unity it compiles now hit play let's see what it says here noob all right guys well that's it for the basic basic tutorials in a lesson on variables. Now there's so much more, but we're gonna go at it slowly. And as the other tutorials comes out, we'll learn more. Hey, you should become a part of this positive and educational channel by hitting that subscribe button. 
again thank you for watching have a great day